Now the give. Jokic trying to disrupt Rondo. He puts it in. Here's Davis for three in the win. Oh, it's good. Anthony Davis has won it for the Lakers. And I could already hear the pitchforks gathering at my door for the take I'm about to make. And I'm sure all of my followers and all my subscribers at this point understand that I try to remain neutral and impartial in my analysis. I even usually convey the fact that I'm a Laker fan before I jump into my analysis. But there's some things we need to discuss after we witness what we just saw. And we're going to get to that in a second. Before we get to that, guys, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps the channel grow. Turn on my notifications and subscribe if you happen to like me more than just the average person that gets videos recommended to them. And on top of that, I'm giving away a PlayStation 5 on my Twitter account, bro. That's like a $500 come up if you win. A link to that giveaway is also in the description down below. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? We're going to open up this video with some praise for the Los Angeles Lakers because we shouldn't take for granted a team that is favored to win a series and coming in and taking care of business. If that's one, th if there's one thing I've learned from the series that the Clippers had versus the Nuggets, it's just that. And the Los Angeles Lakers are definitely expected to come in and take care of business, but they almost lost to a young up-and-coming Denver Nuggets team that really held their own against the Lakers. And there was a point that I even thought that the Denver Nuggets were going to come out with a game two win. And it just shows that no matter how much the chips are down and the odds are stacked against the Nuggets, they're always going to fight back. But you see, I feel like the Denver Nuggets are a team that's very similar to the very first of a three-part superhero trilogy. You know how like the very first movie in a superhero trilogy it always has to do with the super the story of how the superhero gets his powers? Well, I feel like the Denver Nuggets are just like that. They're still learning that they have superpowers and they're trying to learn how to use them. They're a very young, good, up and coming team that without a doubt, they're going to eventually compete for NBA finals. But you see, the issue is I don't think their time is here yet. You see, this is the first time I've ever seen Jamal Murray finally become a bit of a dog. You know, finally going out and throwing up baskets and chucking up when he feels like his team needs it. But this is also the first time Michael Porter Jr. has been in an NBA playoff series. And I feel like he needs to be more and more of a factor if the Denver Nuggets want to go the distance. I also noticed that the team has a perfect combination of very, very good and talented youth in combination with very good and experienced veterans. Paul Millsap has been to the playoffs many times, and I believe Will Barton has been there a couple of times with the Portland Trailblazers, but aside from that, this team needs some seasoning. Also, Jeremy Grant's been there a couple of times, but aside from that, this team needs some seasoning. This team needs to go through those tough playoff series, and I feel like this is going to do wonders for their development. You see, Jamal Murray hasn't been in a playoff series like this yet. He hasn't faced a monster like LeBron James yet. He hasn't faced LeBron James teaming up with another top five NBA player in Anthony Davis yet. And the fact that they're able to hold their own in a neutral court should tell you how talented these Denver Nuggets are. But you see, in order for the Denver Nuggets to become successful, 
They're going to need to see way more from players like Gary Harris, from players like Michael Porter Jr. And they're probably going to need a little bit more depth to contribute as well. Maybe in a couple years, Bull Bull develops and he becomes a factor as well. You don't, you never know with the Denver Nuggets. The thing that's kind of frustrating is they have all the talent in the world. They just need a little bit more experience together as a unit in order to finally reach that hump. And I believe in time, we're eventually going to see a point where the Nuggets are the team to go through in the West in order to make it to the NBA Finals. But that time isn't here yet. This team reminds me very much like the early 2010s OKC Thunder that featured James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and Kevin Durant. And so long as you don't see the Denver Nuggets make some sort of terrible trade like uh, in order to save money in cap space, then I feel like this team has a couple of championship runs in them for the future. Now, we also have to discuss the Los Angeles Lakers because a very key reason why the Lakers have been doing so well against the Nuggets is because in terms of matching up with them, they're kind of a matchup nightmare for the Denver Nuggets. You see, Frank Vogel could throw out Dwight Howard to guard Nikola Jokic. He could throw out JaVale McGee, but they're not really as productive when they have JaVale McGee on the floor. He could have Anthony Davis guarding Nikola Jokic as well. If Kyle Kuzma is on, he could have Kyle Kuzma defending Paul Millsap. And Paul Millsap is up there in age, so he's putting out like single-digit games at this point, And he's not nearly as productive as he once was. And his age is truly beginning to show. As a result, the Denver Nuggets are kind of forced to lean on Jamal Murray a little bit more this year, which hasn't really been a problem. But they need that third go-to guy. And at times, it appears as though Michael Porter Jr. has been that go-to guy. But how much could you expect from a guy that hasn't even played a full NBA season to carry this team and to shoulder the burden of being the third scorer against quite possibly one of the greatest teams that we've ever seen to feature LeBron James with one of his greatest teammates in Anthony Davis? This also features, I, in my opinion, aside from Eric Spolstra, I think Frank Vogel is also one of the greatest coaches that LeBron James has ever been coached by. So there's just so much going for the Lakers and there's so much going up against the Denver Nuggets. But if there's one thing that I think the Nuggets also have is Michael Malone is a fantastic coach for this roster and they were really in it towards the end up until that buzzer beater by Anthony Davis, which you couldn't do really much about it. What are you supposed to do in that scenario he literally had a hand to his face from Nikola Jokic it was guarded perfectly it's just an unstoppable shot from a player that was feeling it all night long I have no doubt in my mind that maybe I don't think this is gonna be a sweep okay like I see trending on Twitter Lakers and four which I want you guys to take a moment to comment when you think the series is gonna end what you think the finale is gonna be I don't think it's gonna be Lakers and four I feel like the Denver Nuggets are the most deadliest once teams start underestimating them and I'm seeing a lot of people underestimating the Nuggets so let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below how you think the series is going to end I feel like it might be Lakers and six but I don't want to jinx it because for all you know the Denver Nuggets could come back and again shock the world with another LA team let me know what you guys think about this uh, in the comment section down below I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload